Two microaggressions are racist statements or actions that underpin the inferiority complex and irrational fear that some people have towards black people and ethnic minorities. Here are some tips on what to say when you come across them at school, in your workplace, or even in the boardroom. Example one. A good response to this is to say, your proximity to black people does not give you a license to say or do something racist, and then put a smile on it. Example two, I say flip the question and make them uncomfortable. Ask them what it is about your first answer that did not satisfy their question. And even go further and ask them where they're really from. And if they think that being white suffices for being British or American, tell them they don't know their history. Example three, I say this, that is a racist statement to suggest that black people and ethnic minorities have an unfair advantage and are stealing jobs from qualified white people. The trope against black women as angry, aggressive, hostile, threatening, and dominant is rooted in the legacy of slavery. To demean, dehumanize, and silence black women, it still happens today in every position a black woman holds. Yes, in schools, workplace, and in the media. When we are passionate, we are called angry. We are passionate and vocal. We are called aggressive. We have a difference of opinion. We are threatening. They put all this together and call us dominant. They even try to police stone our body language. A black woman with an opinion is not a threat. A black woman who stands up for herself is not a threat. If you lack the ability to hold your own in a debate or discussion with a black woman, it doesn't mean you're being bullied. So stop projecting your insecurities and assigning negative stereotypes on black women. Black women are not going to conform or compromise who we are. It is not the job of black women to fix your irrational fear of us. Listen and learn. Playing the race card is an overtly racist and insidious phrase used to stigmatize black people and ethnic minorities into silence. It whitewashes systemic racism and trivializes lived experiences of discrimination. We are expected to internalize racism, ignore the erosion of our dignity, and the attempt to relegate us to third-class citizens. <sighs> Say it with me. Oh, hell no. Racists complain that black people get an advantage of special treatment from racism. What? Confronting racism is not an advantage, it's our right, be it in schools, workplace, and in every aspect of society. Fighting hair discrimination, stopping police brutality, protesting systemic racism, none of this is playing the race card. Freedom of speech doesn't give the right to stigmatize black people. The only race card played in recent human history is the white race card and it's played with a full deck. Listen and learn and let's all end racism. Yes, let's end the strong black woman stereotype. This centuries-old trope that black women don't experience pain like white women positions black women as women of hardship, more durable to pain and suffering than white women. What utter nonsense. Here's why. This racist trope is rooted in the dehumanization of the female black identity, a direct legacy of slavery. So whether it's the inhumane medical treatment of the enslaved Miss Westcott or this 2017 nursing book full of racist tropes about the pain thresholds of black and ethnic minorities, this is systemic racism in action. It also contributes to the high rate of black maternal and pregnancy related deaths. This racist trope is to silence our pain, so let me tell you this. Yes, I'm a strong black woman, an affirmation of an enduring strength that is human, humane, and humbling, not an invitation to pile on the oppression. We bleed and cry too. Some white people acting all oppressed because we call out their white privilege and then they deny they have such privilege cracks me the heck up. Let's nip this ignorance in the bud. White privilege is a product of systemic racism. Racism is a power construct created by white people to deny black people an equal value of life and liberty to feed their inferiority complex, otherwise known as white supremacy. I'm talking politically, socially, culturally, economically, overtly, and covertly. It means white people will always be insulated by biased media, never experience racial police brutality or work or school discrimination based on their race. Yes, it means when they walk into that store with a black or brown person, the security will follow the black or brown person. White privilege simply means you will never be disadvantaged because of the color of your skin. It has jack all to do with you being white working class, working 70 hours a week, or living in a council flat or in a project. Listen and learn.